now we're going to talk about age and gender pyramids. And if you took biology recently or another class dealing with populations, you've probably seen something like this before. So uh, a couple definitions for you. Population structure. Now, the population structure are aspects of a population that include age, gender, race, language, religion, social, and occupational groups. And taking these particular aspects of population, we can create what's known as a population pyramid. Most conventional types of pyramids involve age or gender, or sometimes a little bit of both. Right now, we're pretty much going to deal a little bit with both. You're going to see them in the same pyramid itself, as in this particular slide right here. Um, now, these pyramids can change as a country progresses through what's known as a demographic transition. And we're going to talk about demographic transitions in the next section. So for right now, just understand that the changes that countries and populations go through, these particular pyramids can change. So just to give you a little heads up on what you're going to see here, um, here we see rapid growth. And we see rapid growth. We have males and females. So males are on the left, females are on the right. We see an age structure. Usually the age structures are um, every five years. So we see 0 to 4, 5 to 9, 10 to 14, and up. Now this down here below is the percent of population. So in the middle, we have 0%, and that's sort of our starting point. Don't think of this as a typical graph. So anything to the left is not necessarily negative. It just happens to be male in this particular graph. Um, and notice that this is the percent of the population. So down here, we see 2% of the population, 4%, 6%. Now, it, this might not represent the entire population of if Afghanistan, or the United States, or Italy, but it does show a portion of it. So these are typically um, what an age pyramid would look like. So in this first one, we have rapid growth. Notice that we have a large number of children between the ages of 0 and 14. And remember that fertile age is between 15 and 49. So we have another large number, whereas our older population in Afghanistan is pretty small. The United States shows something completely different. So notice we have about the same number of people between the ages of 0 and 15, or 0 and 14. And our fertile age, 14 to 49, is just slightly larger. And then our aging population is actually um, a lot more than Afghanistan, but it's still a little bit less than our younger age. This is slow growth. We do see some growth, but it's not very large. Now, if you notice in Italy, notice that the number of children between 0 and 14 are actually smaller than the number of women and men between that fertile age, 15 to 49. We have a larger number of people. Now, this is a decrease. We have more middle-aged people than we do younger people. So there's going to be a decrease in the population here. Now, we also see differences within countries. So that particular age structure we just saw, the gender and age structure, the pyramid, it might look different if we're looking at different cities within a country or different, um, different locations. So the differences will show in pyramids within countries as well. And this is a very general, and this is out of your textbook, this is a very general example of what you might see if we were to compare um, two cities together or if we were to compare um, a city versus the entire country or whatnot. So those structures can be different. Those pyramids can be very different for um, inside countries as well. So examples may show an immigration into an urban city for selective age groups, whereas if we were to take a look at the rural age groups for the same year, we might see an emigration for the selected age groups. So it's very interesting to also see the cities as well, or different locations within countries to see if there's a difference in population. Now sex structure and the sex ratio is actually very important. Typically, um, well, first let's define sex ratio, ratio. This is the number of males per 100 females in a population. Typically, we see more male births than we do female births. And this is for a variety of biological, social, cultural reasons that we see this. 
sometimes people might prefer males over females because we live in a very patriarchal society. So some people might uh, discontinue a birth because they know it's not going to be a male. So a lot of reasons might go into that factor. However, as we move into the age and um, the older somebody is, typically we have more females will eventually outnumber the number of males outnumber the number of males. And this is because males tend to have a higher mortality rate. Females are, um, th their, their life expectancy is a little bit longer than males in most countries, and actually. So females tend to outlive. Now we do see anomalies, of course. If we have high childbearing regions, we might see some of the women die younger because of childbearing age. Uh, they might die in childbirth, or they might not get the proper care that they need during childbirth, and so they perish. So anom anomalies do exist in places. However, for the most part, generally, we see uh, more male births than female births, but females typically outnumber males um, towards the end of life. And we have this thing called a dependency ratio. Now the dependency ratio is the relationship between the working or what's known as the economically active population and the non-working population. Typically, um, your non-working population might be elderly over 65 or it might be younger than 14 and this is actually where that that number comes from. Remember the fertility age is 15 to 49 so those are the age ranges that they typically think somebody is going to be economically active. So um, children under the age of 14 and population over 65 typically are considered to be dependents. Now for MEDCs, we typically see a dependency ratio between 50% and 75%, whereas for LEDCs, it may be higher and sometimes it might go over 100, and that's just because of the age structure of the particular location. Now we also can calculate for youth dependency and elderly dependency, but I did not give you those particular equations. Just know that um, you can figure that out easily, just take away the other factor and you can figure out the dependency ratio. Now ratio is important because more uh, because the economically active population will generally contribute more to the economy while that dependent population they're going to be recipients of government funds of other funds and it's it might not go back into the economy so um, that ratio is important for a lot of reasons. Now, of course, we see cultural and family situations that may require younger people to start working or older members. So these are those younger members might be, again, children under, four, under 14. And the older members, sometimes they don't want to retire. So you might see people um, 70, 75 years old who have not retired from the workforce. So there are anomalies that exist here as well.